I keep telling you that these so-called prophets, which may be prophets, they're just deceptive prophets. These deceptive prophets are the gatekeepers. Hello everyone, welcome to the Alabama Woodsman, where I am but one of many sheepdogs who hunt the evil most people pretend doesn't exist. Welcome to my channel. If this is your first time here, I hope you can find something useful on my channel, and if you are a return viewer, you're obviously a glutton for punishment, and I appreciate that about you. Alright folks, this is a repost because YouTube took my other video down for medical misinformation. It was the part where I was talking about bold as a lion okay and I made a comment on something he said and they they gigged me on that so now I've got a, a 90 day warning gotta be a little bit more careful so we're gonna stay away from that subject for a while uh, but this is a repost so I've removed that and I've just reposted for his glory and narrow road 79 and then you know that'll be the video so that's all I got to do is remove that and I will just take their class and promise to be a a good heretic hunter in the future for as long as it was up there were some really good comments that were made so i appreciate all those i'm sorry those have been lost uh but i did i did read and i've made a comment on some of them so it's just one of those things it happens all right let's get into the reposted video all right folks i truly am appreciative of you watching um, also, like and share. When you watch my buddies, my, my friends' videos, like and share them as well. Share them on your Facebook or wherever, because um, that's how the word's going to get out. So in this video, we're going to do something a little bit different than what I normally do. I'm going to talk to you about three different false prophets, and then I've got to set the record straight. So here is false prophet number one. Uh, the Lord had me write a, a prophetic poem. This was back on Friday, February 23rd, 2024, and for whatever reason, I never posted it. For whatever reason, I never posted it. For whatever reason, I never posted it. So he's bringing me back to it now. He wants me to share it now. And I know that his his timing is essential, right? His timing is never a minute off. So there's, there's somebody, maybe several of you, that need to hear this uh, today. So praise God. All right, folks, so she gets the word from God, and she tells you, and I, I, I repeated it, made it three times for emphasis. She says that for whatever reason, I didn't post it. Hmm. Whatever, for whatever reason, she didn't post it. She has control. I keep telling you that these so-called prophets, which may be prophets, they're just deceptive prophets. These deceptive prophets are the gatekeepers. They release it when they want to. They, they handle it how they want to. They release it when they want to. I have a problem with that. That's a straw on the camel's back. So she tells you that, that she didn't release it, but then she turns around and says, well, God told me to release it and that this, this prophecy is for some of you out there who need to hear this now. Okay, so let me ask you this. Right now it has 760-something, I think, views. Um, that message is just for potentially some of a 760 group. See, this is one of the problems I have with these modern-day YouTube prophets. The Word of God, the written Word of God, will reach everyone. It will reach everyone. But these prophets, it's only going to reach the people that like them. So she has over 7,000 subscribers. But And, and that's look, that's, that's more than I got. But only the people who subscribe to her have the potential to hear God's prophetic message, which is a problem. Those who have the Bible can get all of God's prophetic messages, but God is only speaking this, you know, in, in reality, God is only speaking this to only 7,000 certain people. And she says it's not even for everybody, only some people. Folks, does that sound like biblical prophecy? Because that's what prophecy in America is today. He said, come to me, all who are weary, drink from the well so you can hear clearly. I am speaking 
Why can't you hear me? You have left your first love and found a strong drug. A pleasant delusion in your ears have been plugged. I'm calling you. Draw near is met with a shrug. I guess you have better things to do than listen to my ways. I am the truth. But you are attracted to lies. You soaked them in like a sponge. So I left the 99 to come seek out the one. Wait, why? Wait, why? Wait, why? Folks, do you really think Jesus says, wait, why? That's something we do. Wait, why do you run from me? What have I done to become such an enemy? I have been nothing but a friend to thee. But when this walk got complex, your heart became vexed and you left. Still I call and you haven't come yet. You've become deaf to my cries and my pleas. My plan is so perfect. Why did you leave? I have all that you need. I am your sufficiency. My child, come home. You're lost and alone and feeling forgotten. But my thoughts of you outnumber the sands on the sea. I think of you often. You're never far from my mind. I showed you the truth and you chose to go blind, but I am the great shepherd and I'll lead you home. You are not forgotten. You are never alone, yet still you roam in dry places, a desert, a wasteland. You've rebelled a thousand times and I'm still stretching out my hand. Just take it. The thing that you're running from will heal if you face it. We'll face it together. I'll dress every wound. You must call upon me. I'm coming real soon and I want you to come with me. So humble yourself. Do it quickly. I will forgive you and take away your guilt. You'll blossom like a rose that was starting to wilt. I'll make straight the crooked places that lean with a tilt. I'll make you upright and clear up your sight. You don't have to fight, no, not anymore. And yes, that's me knocking. Now open the door. All right, folks, look, I I know John Owen was a Calvinist, and I don't believe everything Calvinists believe. But the key there is I don't believe everything. I have a big problem with predestination that God only chose some people at the beginning of time to be Christians and the other ones he didn't. I have a problem with that doctrine. But not everything a Calvinist said is wrong. I mean, there are some great gospel preachers in Calvinism. Um, There's good holiness preachers. There's good sanctification preachers. But yes, their, their doctrine is wrong on predestination. Um, So for me to put up John Owens, I had somebody say, I I shouldn't be putting up John Owens. He's a Calvinist. But that doesn't mean what John Owens said wasn't true. Now, I'm telling you up front, I have a problem with their predestination. And if I knew all their doctrine, I might find some more. But once I realized their predestination doctrine was was a foul, I just kind of was like, okay, I won't be a Calvinist. But folks, I hope you can see here anyone Absolutely anyone who's read the Bible could have made this prophecy right here. Because for the majority, all she did was regurgitate what's already in the Bible. Timothy Dixon does this like crazy. He just strings along Bible verses and makes a prophecy, which is what she just did. Now let's go over some of the things that she said that were kind of weird. I think of you often. You're never far from my mind. I think of you often. You're never far from my mind. Folks, do you think God stops thinking about you? He forgets about you. He doesn't realize what you're going through. He doesn't watch you 24-7. Do you think that happens? Do you think that there's anything that God doesn't know about you the second it happens? Isn't he always focused on you? And because he's God, he can be focused on me and you at the same time. And it's with ease. There's no resistance with God. God is God. He doesn't have to try to do something. Folks, he's an omnipresent God. He's everywhere. How could he be everywhere, including right here, and me not be on his mind? I think God is watching me 24-7. There, you, you, know, you get people that say, well, when you sin, do you think God doesn't see that? God sees everything. So what she just said here is just wrong. It's just, it's terribly wrong. That's not how it works. That's not how any of this works. God is always, you are always in his thoughts. He can do that perfectly uh, over the whole earth. He knows even the sinner he's watching. Folks, this is, this is not, this is not a word from our God. All right, folks, we're going to move on, but I am going to say this. You're going to see more and more of these words of God written in poem fashion if for some reason this is catching on like i don't recall i don't recall other than the psalms any prophecies coming out in modern day that were 
that were written in poem until the internet hit. And then all of a sudden, somebody did it and it caught on and people liked it because it sounds good. And so it caught on and now everybody gets a poem from God. It's going to get worse, people. Now, if I was Lois Vogel Sharp, I would be mad at God. Because God gave this lady a much better poem than God gives Lois Vogel Sharp. Lois Vogel Sharp is like third or fourth grader. This was like, this was pretty good. I mean, you know, everything flowed. It made sense, even though it was bogus. Um, but if I was Lois B. God, why'd you give her a better poem than me? All right, look, that's that video. Let's move on to the next one. I want to tell you a quick story. Normally, all right, normally, Drew and I and Gary do not ask each other, hey, what are you doing? What, what are you doing for a video coming up Wednesday or Sunday or whatever? But I had started doing a video on, let's just call him Prophet A. I was going to do a video on Prophet A, but then <clears throat> I kind of started looking and I'm like, wait a minute, I think I want to do this other subject. And so I started working on the, the subject that's not Prophet A. So something in, in, in probably in about the first four hours of, of working on this, I'm like, wait a minute, something hit me and it's like, I wonder what Drew's doing his Sunday night video on. So he, I called him up and, and I asked him, you know, hey, what are you doing for Sunday night? Now he knows I'm not going to hijack his project and I'm not going to reveal his project. Um, it's, it's a trust we have. So he told me, well, it just so happened to be that subject, not, not Prophet A, but the subject that I got carried away into. And I'm sorry, I'm trying to be real vague, but I don't want to give his video away. Um, so I'm like, oh, OK, because I was going to do the same subject. And he's like, no, well, you take it, you take it. And I'm like, no, 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 you don't understand. I was going to do a video on profit A and then this caught my eye. But since you're doing it, it's yours. You know, here, let me send you some research that I found and maybe you won't have to research as much. So he took that subject. Well, I was I was like, you know, wow, God, you, 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 you really you know, help me out because I do not like to steal people's thunder. I hate doing that, even if it's by accident. So I decided I hadn't talked to Gary in a while. So I called Gary. I said, Gary, hey, you're not going to believe what just happened. I was going to do a video on this subject and something told me to call Drew and see what he was doing this Sunday. And it happened to be the same subject. And I was like, that to me, that's amazing. And then I said, well, Gary, let me ask you, what, what do you, because something said, ask Gary. I said, Gary, do you mind telling me what you're doing on Sunday? And he told me he was doing it on Prophet A. So Drew, Drew and myself and Gary are getting triggered by the same. The spirit is leading us in the same direction. Okay. And we were all going to do or, you know, how it ever worked out, pretty much the same subjects. So I'm glad I got with Gary to see that he was going to do something on Prophet A. So I'm not going to I'm not going to to tell you who Prophet A is, but or what the subject is, because Gary will be doing his heretic hump day uh, right after, you know, this this video drops. So I don't want to steal his thunder. Andrew's doing his on the subject and I don't want to steal his thunder. So I just thought that was that was kind of amazing. But let's let's look at um, this next profit here. And so God's been talking to me and bringing up the three days of darkness. I talked about this sometime last year, but it's been being brought up heavily by the Lord to me um, here recently. And so what he's brought to my attention is that within these two weeks, we also have Passover. Okay. So we've got so many huge markers, prophetically speaking, of this two week time period and a lunar eclipse really symbolizes like the releasing of negative energy the releasing of things that no longer serve you folks this is a condition of prophecy in the church in america and around the world she strings along these these biblical days and instead of just taking them for the biblical days like the bible says she's going to string them along to prove a point that's where all this is going wrong with this eclipse stuff it, it, it's they're trying to string things along to tell you something. Hey, folks, remember this verse, Revelation 12, 1. And there appeared a great wonder in the heaven, a woman clothed with the sun and the moon under her feet and upon her head a crown of 12 stars. Now, that happened in September of 2017, I believe. Uh, What really happened there? 
What, 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 what do we know happened in the physical world? Pretty much nothing, right? Nothing. The rapture didn't happen. The world didn't end. Our country didn't fall. People wanted to make it about America. Um, they keep doing that, but it never, never works out. Uh, but, but any of the, any of the false prophets that actually put a physical action with that coming uh, fulfilled prophecy were wrong. Hey, folks, you know the the three days of darkness is not in the Bible. We see three days of darkness in Exodus, but there's nothing that says that's going to repeat. But do you know where this this doctrine came from? How old it is? It's older probably than in 1837 because Anna Marie Taichi died in 1873. She is the one that people are attributing this prophecy to. She was part of the spoken word ministry because it's not in the Bible. Folks, it, she was Catholic. It's Catholicism. You'll see the three days of darkness all through Catholicism. And you won't see it at all in fundamental Christianity, but because the NAR is is joining Catholicism, they're also adopting it. You know, you've heard that in Catholicism, whenever uh, Rome conquered uh, a country, they would take some of their highest religious beliefs and kind of amalgamate the, the Roman Catholic Church with those customs. That's why instead of it being called Halloween, the Catholics call it All Hallows Eve. And instead of calling it the Resurrection Day, they call it Easter. The three days of darkness is not even in the Bible. But she's going to string along a whole bunch of holy days to make it say something. And then she lets her New Age witchcraft show. She plays her witchcraft New Age card by saying, A lunar eclipse uh, is, is a sign of you letting go negative energy. <laughs> Folks, all you got to do is listen to these people, and you could tell they are not prophets of our God. All right, folks, the current condition of prophecy that we're seeing in the United States and around the world is to say things that are already in the Bible, which make them redundant. God already told you in that holy book what was going to happen. So those aren't real prophecies. Then you got people that are telling you generic prophecies, like something bad's going to happen, and that could be anything. And then you got people like this who are reposting old bogus prophecies that are not even in the Bible. That's where we are in prophecy today. All right, folks, so that is the repost video. I appreciate any of you who watched it again. And feel free to put your comment. There were some really, really good comments. I'm so sorry we lost those. Um, put your comments back in if you if you want to. I, I, think, I think other people who see this repost would benefit from seeing your comment. And as always, let me leave you with the most clearest word, not even proper English there, but the clearest word ever given by a modern day prophet. This word was so crystal clear, you know it just had to be Jesus himself speaking through the prophet Timothy Dixon when he said, Let not, Leighton, let not, Leighton, let not Satan deceive you. Let not Satan deceive you. Let not Satan deceive you. When the prophets speak, it's perfection in the choice of words.